Hey folks, well today I want to talk to you about steel wool and what I use it for when I carry it in my pack. Well, I've got a piece of 4 aught steel wool and I don't carry steel wool in my kit very often. Once in a while I do, but you know, not too often. It's, you would think it would be really good for cleaning your pots and stuff like that, but with the fineness that you have to use for these other applications, it really doesn't lend itself that well to that. And plus, you know, steel wool is just like, you know, SOS pads or whatever. You, once you use them that way to clean your pots or get them wet or anything, it's just a matter of time before they deteriorate and rust and just fall apart. I would not carry, or I don't carry, a piece this big, usually. I usually carry a piece about this big. But what it is, is it, it creates such a hot ember when you get it to ignite that it will ignite other materials that are harder to ignite with your ferro rod or whatever you're using and um, it just spreads an ember so fast and so hot it's 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 pretty neat if you've never done it before one thing i will say about it is it's a little bit different than most ember fires most ember fires when you get a little bit of a ember or a cherry starting to glow you want to blow gently and kind of work it and kind of just you know not get over the top with steel wool you can basically put <laughs> put like an air compressor on there and I mean it's it does nothing but help it almost within reason but I mean you really want to you change your approach with steel wool you really have to blow on your tinder bundle to get it to ignite um, and the harder you blow on it it seems like the the faster it ignites so all right enough of that about that so what do I use it for in my kit starting fires that's basically it I don't use it to clean my knife with. I don't need to clean my knife. If it's got a little bit of rust on there, sure, it might be nice to just kind of, you know, get rid of it a little bit. But I really don't have that problem a lot. I dry my knife off pretty good. If I have chapstick, I'll put chapstick on it, you know, whatever. Um, so I really don't have that problem. But fire starting, it works real good. Let's get set up and I'll show you the three methods that I used to ignite steel wool. The first method I'm going to use to get this steel wool to ember up is just a ferrule rod. You can see it'll sit there and eat up. Oh, it even caught on fire. I've never seen it caught on fire, catch it on fire like that, but I guess I've never, uh, I generally don't use this big a piece. Look at how much energy is in this thing. And there's still energy left in it. Still a nice glowing ember inside there. It's about done up, but there's still a little bit there. As you saw in the first demonstration with the ferro rod, this steel wool embers up very quickly, but it also goes out very quickly. But it's an extremely hot ember. And you could use this to ignite maybe a fungus that's being very difficult for you to ignite with your ferro rod or whatever. You can use this extremely hot ember to ignite maybe something else that isn't quite as hot but it's longer lasting and it will help you obtain your fire that way otherwise if you're just going to use straight up steel wool keep in mind it goes out pretty quickly but it's just really really hot so i just uh, have a piece of steel wool here and i don't even need this much i'm just going to take some of that off and i'm just going to fluff it up just a little bit and i've just got a file striker I've made and a piece of flint here. So it'll last a little bit, but the initial burst is the hottest part. And you can see it was quite easy to ignite with just simple flint and steel. All right. On to the final method. Alright, by now you've probably guessed what the last method of ignition is going to be. It's going to be batteries. But it's not going to be the typical 9 volt battery that you normally see folks use. Um, 9 volts work great. But you can also use, these are just AAAs, but most folks don't have 9 volt batteries in their flashlights. You know, if you carry a headlamp or if you carry just a regular uh, standard flashlight out into the woods, you're more than likely either going to have double A's, triple A's, or something like that. You're not going to have the 9-volt battery. 
I want to have a little bit of a discussion here real quick regarding batteries. These little batteries, these double A's, uh, or most of them anyway, double A's, uh, triple A's, the larger ones, even C's and D's, they're one and a half volts. I have been able to get sparks off of a one and a half volt battery before with steel wool. I can't remember if I've been as successful or not, I haven't tried it that much. But it's generally, one and a half volts isn't quite enough to readily ignite steel wool. So you need two. Now how do you connect them together? Well first of all, let's just have a little discussion here. If you tie the same ends of the battery together on the top and on the bottom, like if my fingers were wires, basically what I have just done is created a bigger battery. I've created the same voltage battery, but one that will last longer. I've connected them in parallel. If I connect them in series, one end to the other, opposite ends, I have now increased the voltage and I've added the voltage together. In this particular case, I've doubled the voltage because I have two batteries. If I had three batteries, I would have increased it three times. I've got two of them together at one and a half volts a piece. They're now three volts. If I put another one in series, it's four and a half volts. Every one you put in series is just going to increase the voltage, like I said. The voltage is the, I liken it to the pressure in a water hose. The voltage is the pressure. The amount of water that's flowing is the current or the amperage. We don't really need to worry about the amperage right now, but if you take your batteries, put them opposite end to opposite end, you've just increased the voltage of your battery. This is not draining my battery right now. There, this is not a complete circuit. If I put a wire here and here and connect it to a load or connect it to each other, it will drain my battery. This will not drain my battery. If I leave these batteries on the ground, it will eventually drain them, just like your car battery. But for right now, it shouldn't be that big a deal. I'm going to go ahead and push them together, opposite end to opposite end. And I've got a little worm of, of steel wool here. I kind of just made it like how you used to mess around with clay when you were a kid. I'll put these batteries back here. I didn't, I didn't do it too tight. I did it fairly loosely. There's some good surface area on one end. And I'll probably just expand that a tiny bit through here. I found that if you compress it too much, it doesn't like to grow the ember. But on this end, it really doesn't matter. I'm looking for a solid connection on one end and a bunch of surface area or fuzzies. <laughs> That's my technical term, fuzzies, on the other end. So I'm just going to hold this end here and put this end to the battery. Makeshift tinder bundle here, nothing great. Totally compressed tinder bundle, not the greatest thing ever, but it's still ignited. I've got green grass in my tinder bundle, but that's all right. Still worked just fine. All right, folks, well, just a real quick video on the ways that I use to ignite steel wool into an ember to help me out with a bird's nest or create a fire or whatever. I had this video up, uh, I did this video a long, long time ago when I first started my channel. I thought I had some good information, but I didn't put it together very well, so I decided to redo it. Probably be redoing a couple of other videos that I've since deleted that I didn't really care how they turned, care for how they turned out. Like I said, I think the information's good, it's just the camera angles and how, if you can see it and stuff like that didn't really work out so well. Anyway, hope you liked the video. Take care.